We have three tables containing the daily sales of three stores, store one, two, and three. We need to consolidate all of them using dynamic array functions inside one table. And then we are going to create a pivot table to report the weekly sales of the three stores together. Not only this, when we get new data inside the original tables, the pivot table will be updated automatically once we refresh. Hello and welcome to a new video from Dynamic Array Function series, video number 14. In this video, we're going to look at the VStack function once more. We're going to use it to consolidate data coming from three tables. And then we are going to create a dynamic pivot table. This pivot table will be automatically expanded once we add new data inside the three source tables. In the Excel workbook, we have the sales data for the three stores, each and every one coming in a separate table. You can see that we have data for the first two weeks of January and the data already converted into table format. If you check the table design, you will see the name of the first table store one, second table store two, and the third one store three. And also we have additional data for each and every store. We're going to use it after we finish in order to see how this report will be updated automatically. In a separate sheet, we are going to write our function in order to consolidate all data together and also to create the pivot table report or the final report. <music> to consolidate the three tables together, I'm going to use the vStack function. I'm going to write equal and then vs. The first choice is vStack tab. Let's look at the screen assistance. You will find that we have array one, array two, and then we can add array three or four or five. So for our case, each and every array is already inside an Excel table. So I can just start to type the name of the table. So if I type store, S-T-O-E-R, I have the three choices, store one, store two, store three. I can just select the first one and then comma, store two, double click, comma, store three, double click, and then close the bracket and hit enter and here you go i have the data consolidated from the three tables together a quick reminder that up to the date of recording this video the vstack function is available only if you opted into the beta version and you are subscribed to the office insider otherwise you won't be able to use the vstack function you can easily notice that we don't have headers for this consolidated table so we need to find a way in order to add the headers in order to add the headers i need to edit the formula and i have to go to the top left corner of the table where the formula lives if you try any other cell it won't work you won't be able to edit the formula so from the top left corner i'm going to edit the v stack and before the array one here i have the array one which is basically the store one and then store two and then store three so before array one i'm going to add a comma and before the comma, I'm going to add another array containing the headers. In order to write an array or to input an array, I have to use the curly brackets. So I'm going to open and close a curly bracket. And inside the curly brackets, I'm going to add the headers. The first header will be the date. So I'm going to open a double quote and type date because it is a text. So I have to put it inside double quotes. Comma, the second header will be the amount so i'm going to type amount inside double quotes comma the third header is the store name or even i can just use name and then close the double quote for the last header and hit enter and here you go i have the headers added again using the vstack if you check the vstack formula now the first array is the array of the headers with only one row and then the array of store one array of store two and the array of store Three. I need to change the format of this column to date. So I'm going to select the second cell of this column, press and hold, shift and control, and one arrow down. I can go a little bit down more because if I add some more data, I need the same format to be applied. So I'm going to select short date. And then I need to add some borders. I can use conditional formatting. So I'm going to select the entire table and then again go a little bit down. And from the home ribbon, conditional formatting. And then I'm going to select the second option, format only sales that contains. From the drop down here, I'm going to select no blanks and then format. 
let me just add a border i'm going to use the outline border and click on ok ok one more time and let me check here you go you have your borders now in place i can just change the first row to bold and now i am ready i can just create my pivot table In order to create a pivot table, I'm going to select any cell inside the data set and I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Alt and VT and I'm going to place it inside this worksheet. Let me select column I and click on OK. And here you go, you have the pivot table placeholder. From the pivot table fields, I'm going to select the amount and put it inside values. And I'm going to take names in the columns and date inside the rows let me do some grouping for the dates i'm going to select the date field and from pivot table analyze group selection i'm going to select days and then seven number of days seven in order to convert the report into weeks and then i'm going to click on ok and here you go i have the sales for the first seven days and then the sales for the next seven days let me do some quick formatting from design i'm going to select a light formatting like this one and also i'm going to change the number format right click and number format i'm going to select number southern separator and zero decimal places and okay i'm going to adjust the column width convert the first row to bold and also i'm going to use the options in order to stop the auto fit column width and click on okay and i think i'm ready now before adding more data to the original tables i need to count the rows of this table so i'm going to use the rows function equals rows and let me select the first cell of this spelled array and then i'm going to use the hash pound close the bracket and hit enter and here you go we have 43 rows let me add some data and let's see what will happen for this number of rows i'm going to start by adding some data to the store number three so i'm going to select the additional data Control c and at the first blank row i'm going to paste Control v to paste let me go back to my report and let's check the row count it's now 57 and let's try to refresh the pivot table right click and refresh you'll notice nothing happened why because if you check the data source you will find that it stops at row number 46 if you check the source of the data you see that the range is hard coded here the sheet report from b4 up to d46 what we want to do in order to have this source a dynamic source is to refer to a dynamic range in order to do so we are going to define a new name and then feed in the address of the spelled array inside this defined name so i'm going to cancel here then i'm going to select formulas ribbon and then i'm going to select define name and from the find name dialog box i'm going to give a new name let's call it pt source or pivot table source and then i'm going to select the top corner of the table the top corner is basically where the formula the dynamic array formula lives then i'm going to add the hash pound after the b4 b4 is nothing but the top corner of the table and then i'm going to add the hash pound and the hash pound is going to tell excel please use the entire spilled array not only the cell before then i'm going to click this arrow one more time and then okay and now i'm ready i'm going to select the pivot table and then pivot table analyze change data source and i'm going to use the f3 key in order to select from the defined names i have only one name defined pt source and then click on okay okay one more time here you go the pivot table changed and i have the additional two weeks already added in store number three let me go back to the stores data and i'm going to add the new data for the rest of the stores Control c and then Control v one more time Control c and then Control v let me go back to the report now i have the count of the rows increased to 85 i'm going to select the pivot table once more right click and refresh and here you go the new data updated now we managed to consolidate all three tables together using a dynamic array formula and then we used the spelled array as an input for the pivot table and this range is dynamic whenever you add new data you just need to refresh the pivot table and all the data are going to be updated that was all for today if you like this video please like it leave me a comment and subscribe and you'll find some useful links here please check them out i hope that was useful 
Thank you very much for your time and see you next video and bye.